Okay, so in the previous video, we saw how we can test for a structural break using the formula that we see up here, where we estimated the residual sum of squares from a model that employed all 20 observations in the data. We can see the data over here. And then we estimated the residual sum of squares from the first group of data and the residual sum of squares from the second group of data. And we compared the F estimated with the F critical. What we want to do now is we want to run the same test, but using a test for restrictions. So let us go down to step number four. We want to replicate the results using a test for restrictions in Stata. The first thing we have to do is we have to understand what the restricted and what the unrestricted model is. Now the unrestricted model is going to be the model that includes as independent variables both x1, x2, but it will also include a dummy variable that will allow for a change in the constant and two interactive variables, two slope variables. The first one is going to multiply the dummy times variable x1 and the second one is going to multiply the dummy times variable x2. The restricted model is going to presume that alpha 3, alpha 4 and alpha 5 are all equal to zero. And if all these three are equal to zero, that means that my restricted spe specification is going to be y as a function of x1 and x2. So my x null hypothesis now is going to be that alpha 3 equal to alpha 4 equal to alpha 5, and they're all together equal to zero. If these are zero, that means that the restricted model is a better specification. So in the case of h null, we choose the restricted. If, however, either alpha 3, alpha 4, or alpha 5 are not equal to 0, that means that I prefer the unrestricted specification, and that's going to be in our H1, in the alternative hypothesis. Now, how does that relate to whether we have a structural break or whether we do not have a structural break? If we choose the unrestricted version, in other words, if I choose to include the dummy variable x1d and x2d, that implies that the model presents a significant improvement in the residual sum of squares once we control for differences in the slope and differences in the constant. So saying that I'm choosing the unrestricted model is equivalent to saying that we have a structural break. Again, saying that we choose the restricted model, so we do not include either a control for the constant or the slopes, is equivalent to saying that we do not have a structural break. So we have to run those two models, so we can do that in two ways in Stata. We can do it the long way or the short way. Let's start with the long way. The long way requires that we estimate both models, and we can go to Stata. What we will need is the restricted model, which we estimated earlier as well, so let us execute this. But we will also need the dummy variable which we have already created. If we go to the data, we can see that variable D2 is already created. That's my dummy variable. However, I will also need to create two interactive variables. The first one is going to be called ID1 multiplying D2 times X1 and ID2 multiplying D2 times X2. So once I execute, I have two new variables over here. As you can see, ID1 takes the value 0 for when my dummy is equal to 0, and it takes the value 12, 13, 14 for the remaining observations where I'm multiplying 1 times 12, 1 times 13, and so forth. So I can regress now my unrestricted specification, and there is my ANOVA table. As we can see, in the unrestricted specification, my residual sum of squares is 4.96, whereas in my restricted specification, it is significantly higher at 184. We can transfer those back to Excel, and I have already done that. So let's go back to Excel now. As you can see, the unrestricted specification shows a very large drop in the residual sum of squares, and here is the residual sum of squares from the restricted specification. So let us go ahead and conduct the test to see if this drop is statistically significant. And here's our formula. I have color coded that for you. The RSS from the restricted model is equal to 184. We can see this over here. The RSS from the unrestricted model is 4.96. Q is the total number of restrictions, which is equal to 3. And N minus K, where N is the number of observations, and K is the number of variables in the unrestricted model, which 
we can go back and see and count that they're equal to six. I'm sorry, not the number of variables, the number of parameters. We can see that we're estimating one, two, three, four, five, six parameters. So that if I estimate the if I estimate my F statistic, we can see that we get exactly the same result that we got earlier, which is 168.95. And we can compare that against the F critical value, which was 3.14. The same value that we got before and we can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis so my null hypothesis was that i choose restricted and that there is no structural break and my alternative hypothesis that i choose the unrestricted model and that there is a structural break we get exactly the same results as we got earlier using the chow test a quicker way to run this test is to go to Stata, and then immediately after specifying the regress command, I can simply say test the variables D2, ID1, and ID2, and then Stata is going to test it automatically against the null, hypo against the null hypothesis that all of them are equal to zero. And as you can see, we get exactly the same results, 168.96, no matter which way we estimate the test for structural breaks. One additional advantage of running the test for structural breaks using restrictions is that we can see that the dummy variable over here, D2, is statistically significant. We can also see that ID1, the first interactive dummy that multiplies the dummy with the variable X1, is also statistically significant. That tells us something about the structural break. It tells us something about the differences in the two groups of data, whether they whether the data differs because of change in slope or whether it differs because of a change in the constant. So I will go ahead and I will upload this Excel file for you, including my notes, including that is the diagram for the F-test and the data as well. What you have in this file is three sheets. The one that we worked on is called Solve. The, there is the file that is called for Stata. And this is where I'm importing my data from. And then there is another sheet, which is called sheet one, where you can just simply replicate all the results on your own on the Excel file and practice. Uh, I will also upload the file with the code for Stata. And then in future videos, we're going to see very quickly how we can replicate those results with SAS, eViews, SPSS. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.